Let's say rubs kebabs. Hey! <laughs> oh, wow, now he's very Singaporean, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Ebook Vlogs. I'm Xenia, and today there is a very special guest joining me, and he is. Guess who's back, 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 back again. G'day, mate. <laughs> I'm Stephen. I'm from Australia and I've been in Singapore for about a year now. What would you say you usually eat back home in Australia? A lot of steak and I don't mind a kebab once in a while. So what would you say is your favourite food in Singapore? Chicken rice, roast peat, roast pork. <laughs> Roast pork. I heard from the team, right? He eats chicken rice or roast pork rice every other day. And that's why today we are going to bring you around Katong, this food paradise, to show you that Singapore is more than just chicken rice and roast pork rice. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, we're gonna start off with something light. It's like a snack. So just now we were talking to the lady boss and she actually shared with us that she started baking 25 years ago. That's a really long time. So we've got here a chocolate tart and a banana pie from Donna Manis. First off, we're gonna start off with the banana pie. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's very nice though. Yeah. The reason why I like it so much is because the banana is very sweet and it's very soft. So it blends very well with the pastry itself. The little roasted peanuts on the top give mm. it a nice crunch. And I think it's not just the taste, it's also the auntie who makes it very homely. It's like you're buying from your own aunt. Have you tried something like this before in Australia? Not a banana pie. I mm. guess the closest thing is like an apple pie. But yeah, that's common everywhere. Mm. So this is unique. I like it. And next we have chocolate tarts, which I'm a little more familiar with. They remind me of like my childhood days mm. where like primary school when you go to a like bakery shop and then I always beg my mum to buy me this. Wow! It's like an ice cream. Mm. I can imagine the auntie like crushing the biscuit herself and molding it. It doesn't look very perfect. And it's in bite-sized pieces. I think you can just pop them in one at a time. I'm sure I can finish in one bite. So how do you find this place, your first stop? It's pretty good. The, the chocolate tarts were amazing. The banana pie was on point as well. The location is not something I would find in Australia. You wouldn't expect a nice pastry place to be mm. hidden like this. Yeah, when you think of good pastry, right, you would think of like cafes. I always like this kind of unassuming places yeah. though. Because they always surprise you somehow. I think it's a definite visit. If I saw it just walking by, I don't think I would stop. But it's okay, now we try for you already so you can come down and try yourself. Oh! Auntie, I want two of the laksa one of the Auntie, I uh, want two of the laksa <laughs> Chicken Chicken? Chicken? And one of the bro Nailed it! <laughs> So we are gonna try one of my all-time favorite Singaporean food and that is laksa. Katong laksa. <laughs> Very good, katong laksa. So actually we are here at the original katong laksa shop that is located at Roxy Square and their trademark is, as you can see, there is no chopsticks given to you because they cut their noodles so you can just eat it with a scoop. Very complex because this one has coconut milk, the broth itself has a lot of sediments. It's milky, I guess the coconut milk makes it taste milky and like the flavour's rounded. And it's spicy at the same time. But because of the coconut milk, right, it neutralizes the heat. So you wouldn't be like all wow. the time. You can still enjoy spicy food. I just had one of the cockles. Nice, it's right? like a mouthful of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the cockles eh. I always like add extra hum. What's hum? Oh, cockles. Oh, cockles. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's in your English. <laughs> no Hokkien. Uh, Liang Pan Liang Pan Yuen Yuen Chen Mian Wow, steady Yeah, very good That's from Australia like Let's try Latiao Yuen Tian Tian Wow! So the number 45 Steady, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Let me test your knowledge of Singapore Ouch, okay <laughs> How did the merlion come around? They saw a fish that looks like a lion <laughs> wow. oh, from Australia! Australia. Go, go, go. Winner! <laughs> wow, thank god the uncle saved me from 
from the question. Next, we ordered Yang Pan Yuan Chen Mian. Yes, from Ming, which is also at Roxy Square. And I must say that I'm actually someone who don't order Yuan Chen Mian. And now we are gonna try his wonton noodles, which has been around for 40 years. Wow, sure. Oh, they have this special ingredient in the sauce, right? I can't decipher what is it, but it feels very different from other wonton meat outside there. I will order this eh. I feel like the noodles are cooked to perfection. I like to call it QQ. The noodles are QQ. <laughs> I've had the boiled dumplings, but I've never tried this kind of dumpling. I thought it was like tortilla chips. Tortilla chips! So different, like unique. What is this called? Chasu. It's sweet. There are some parts that is better. For some reason, the one I had crunchy. just then was like kind of crunchy, yeah. Mm. At the side but still though. tender. This was about $5, which initially I thought it was a bit pricey. But then, the portion is quite huge, eh? And there's like so many elements to it. Yeah, and you get an uncle who calls you by number and country. Australia, winner. <laughs> it's always good to take a walk after a meal, or in our case, a lot of meals! We are super full and that's why we are taking a break just walking down Katong and we realised there are a lot of Instagrammable spots like this one. And Stephen also told me he wants to be an Instagram boyfriend. That's his dream, ha huh? So yeah, let's go! here at Old Bibik's Peranakan Kitchen. Yes, to try some Peranakan food. Did you know that I'm actually Peranakan? Really? Yeah. I did not know. No lah, I'm just trolling you. So this is Chiu Hu Cha. It looks like a dismantled popia. The lady boss was telling me, right, when they want to test whether the girl is good in the kitchen, this is the ultimate test. See whether her knife skills is good enough. This I is think... like um, Korean sum. So many different flavours. Like a woody flavour? I would think of it as a very concentrated popia filling with the addition of a very flavorful mushrooms. I think this is great as an appetizer. Let's move on to the one you are very excited about, and that is the chinchalok omelette. Chinchalok is fermented small shrimp. People usually don't find it pleasant. I really don't know whether you will like this. Okay. I'll let you know if I don't like it. It's not as crunchy as I thought it was going to be. Inside is very, very soft. It's almost like a pillow. So the usual omelette would have like bits of ham and capsicum. But this is totally different to that, especially the way it's cooked. Yeah. And it gets its savoury side from the fermented Chinchalok. Prawns. Chinchalok. I don't know how they cook it in a way that they kill that fermented fishy taste. Next, we're going to try out the bakwala. Tofu! This is the fruit itself. So it's actually poisonous. You have to go through a lot of tedious process to make it edible and at the same time the flavour is very very complex. I don't know if it's because of the colour but it reminds me of black bean sauce. The tofu inside is really uh, soft and silky. It's really like a paste eh? It's very chunky. It's got a lot of ili ili inside. What's ili ili? It's, this is the definition of ili ili. Next, we'll try the beef rindang. This is something that I think a lot of Singaporeans are very familiar with. Mm. It's like curry but very different kind of curry. The beef's really tender. You can tell there's like heaps of spices in it. Uh, the texture of the sauce, it's not completely smooth. You can feel illy illy bits in it. <laughs> I think it'll go perfectly with rice. It hits every single flavour profile and that means savoury thick, spicy thick, a little bit sweet thick. Pranakan food are so complex. Like the best way to describe each flavour is many many layers of individual flavours all kind of combined together yeah. and they all dance on your tongue. <laughs> every single dish they have their like unique flavour profile and even this drink itself, it is guava citrus iced tea. When he drank it, he told me it tastes like alcohol. Yeah. It has like some fermented taste to it. But just let him off lah, his first time and let him enjoy okay? Let's get drunk. There is no alcohol in there. We're at our last stop at Ubiki Ganesh Villas. This place is actually recommended by one of our ebook writers, Katie. Thanks, Katie. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good. Okay, so first up, we're gonna try this. I thought it was a pumpkin with a nice topping of fish roe. He forgot that this is a vegetarian restaurant. I can understand why you think it's fish roe. They have like little, little bums. I'm pretty sure you've never eaten this before, but when I was young, right, you have like prata looking bihun pancake. After that, they have like the shredded coconut and the orange sugar. 
It tastes like their orange sugar. I was gonna guess it's like a rice dessert that's been sweetened. I think this is closer to a kueh than a cake. So if you haven't tried kueh, you should try kueh. The next episode, okay? We'll try these. What's masala? It's like a kind of spice. Okay. It's a very common ingredient in their cuisine. Tastes like a Chinese herbal tea, tea. with okay. milk. Mm. Like the more you drink it, the herbal flavour is not as apparent. So you still have that like teh tarik taste, but the masala itself is just a sidekick. So it complements very well, it's very well balanced. I would say this is one of the best I've tried. So this is mango lassi. Mm -hmm. You know what is mango lassi? Mango yogurt, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> you thought I wouldn't get it. <laughs> the yogurt flavour hits first, but then like a fizziness to it. Like a really light fizziness. First flavour was sour. And then after that, right, the fresh mango flavour came through. Next, we have the Puri set. When it was first served to us, I was telling him, the only name I can think about is, is called Kapum. So this is actually a deep fried bread. People usually eat it for breakfast or snack. And you eat it like you would eat a prata. Do you like chickpeas? Not the biggest fan. I love it. Hmm? But it makes me fart a lot. So good luck to you <laughs> later. Help <Hope love>. lah. <laughs> it reminds me of a Lebanese bread. I have a lot in Australia. And the texture and the thickness is really similar to that. I can imagine myself having a conversation with my friend and then I just keep eating, you know. It doesn't fill you up as much as a prata. Okay, moving on. Dose. So this is one of my favourite. You gotta try, <laughs> I'm not gonna describe it. So the texture of this dose, it reminds me of a French crepe. Mm -hmm. so like the thickness and um, towards the middle of it, it's a lot softer and on the edges it's crispy. When I ordered this right, I love the sauce because mm. it's just so refreshing and it's so light. This is like a summer dish. Overall, the food is amazing. When people think about vegetarian food, right? They always think that, okay, it's very healthy, it's very plain. But no eh. All the food here is very flavorful. So we just spent our entire day exploring Katong and also eating tons and tons of food. I'm so full! What is your favorite food? My favorite is the chocolate tart from the morning. It's just not what I expected. The chocolate ice cream in the pastry. I thought it was just going to be normal chocolate, but it was ice cream. Yes. My favourite has to be the Pranakan meal we just had. The flavours are really complex. And I think because of that, it is so unique and irreplaceable. So after today, right, trying more than just chicken rice and roast pork rice, yeah. has your impression of Singaporean food changed? It's changed massively. Mm. There are so many different um, cuisines to have. And especially the Puranakan, like how I learn about how that one dish tells whether a girl will make a good wife or not. Yes, the was interesting. Jiu Cha. For those of you who like this kind of vlogs where we bring Stephen around to explore Singapore and try different uniquely Singaporean food, please comment yay and suggest different hidden gems for us so we can bring him around again. Thanks for watching this episode of Epoch Vlogs. If you want to watch more, click over there. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye! See ya! <laughs> Liar!